In my last video, I talked about how Winter 2023 was one of the best seasons, mainly because I, for the first time, was watching 10 new airing shows, 14 total if you count second cores or second seasons, and pretty much enjoyed all of them. If you haven't already, please watch that video since this video relates to that one. I also talked about the amount of solid romance shows that we had seen this past season, and if you've noticed, wasn't there one that was missing? Yep. I thought Koopa Won't Let Me Be Invisible was probably my favorite, so I legit put it separately from my main video. There were a lot of spectacular shows this season, but this to me was by far the show that I wanted to watch weekly. Koopa Won't Let Me Be Invisible is about a student named Shiraishi, who due to his appearance and how he acts, is completely invisible to everyone in society. The only time that he can be seen if he does something embarrassing, Maybe when he has a friend or sibling next to him, or in Shiraishi's case, someone who can actually notice him. That's the role of Nagisa Kubo, the main heroine of the series. Despite what people say about Shiraishi, Kubo is the only one that seems to actually find Shiraishi, and often tries to tease him for it. Now you may be wondering, isn't this literally just Takagi-san or Nagatoro? Yeah, it kinda is. We've seen this premise a lot, especially recently, but Kubo and Shiraishi's relationship isn't exactly the same as Takagi or Nagatoro's relationships with their respective main characters. Shiraishi himself doesn't exactly want to be necessarily invisible, he just simply was born with it, and it isn't necessarily in his control that people can't see him. Kubo acknowledges this and learns about Shiraishi more and more. Even though she does tease Shiraishi at first, she grows to take the situation more seriously, never amounting to the teasing of Takagi and Nagatoro. At times, she wants to help Shiraishi and his ability to be invisible, but they just can't seem to find a way to do so. Kuwa tries to get into Shiraishi's life so that he is able to have a fun high school life, something that he seems to not have while he was growing up. If you're growing up and you're just invisible to everyone, it would probably make you depressed seeing that people just don't acknowledge who you are. Shiraishi had a lot of inconveniences throughout the anime, and seeing Kubo help Shiraishi is very wholesome. I wanted to introduce this series to a lot of people because not only is it one of the cutest rom-coms this season, but more importantly, its thoughtful intentions and its adaptation from the manga. Naturally, when there's an anime that comes out that you really like, and wanted to have an anime adaptation, everyone typically gets excited for it, like Chainsaw Man. This show to me was exactly the same thing. When I was reading this throughout the you know what era, it simply was too cute and wholesome for me to handle. This show in itself is a very straightforward slow burnout romance with a lot of cute moments between the main duo that I couldn't help but smile at everything that I read and saw. When this show got announced for winter of 2023, I was super excited for it to come out. Pretty much even the fall season of 2022, I completely phased over it once the show started airing. There are two main comparisons that I want to talk about in this video that simply had a lot of love for. One is the dedication for this show. Pine Jam has recently been doing a lot with this recent anime. Do It Yourself and Kageki Shoujo are two anime that have come out in recent years with such fluffy emotions all over them. Kubo is no different. The amount of care and attention that came from the manga is pretty much exactly the same. The expressions, the art, even the way that some characters act such as Seita or Akina all feel right to their respective characters. To be honest, when I saw that the director was going to be the same person that did Rent a Girlfriend, that didn't really give too much hope for me. However, I'm glad that the show didn't turn out bad and I'm really happy to see that the show did well in general. Every single chapter has been adapted and even some anime original stuff was put into it, making it feel natural as a whole. One thing I wanted to note was that this anime technically was introduced a while back in 2019. Hanakana is a legendary voice actor and when the manga first came out during 2019, she was asked to do ASMR videos about Kubo-san and a few of them were from the manga. The amount of dedication that she had three years before the anime aired is incredible and the detail in her voice as Kubo is done really well. Once the anime was announced, she immediately took the role as Kubo and I'm glad that she is enjoying the show and or manga a lot. This applies to a lot of the cast as they started reading Kubo and enjoyed a lot of the manga so far. Hi, Kubo-san. 
ありがとう。The second thing that I wanted to talk about was the chibi art style. This is so freaking cute. I, I literally can't say anything. <laughs> the chibi art style in itself was probably the main concern that I had with the show. How would the studio be able to animate the chibi art styles, and if they did, how was it going to work? Would it be fully chibi for five minutes, or the main, which was the main thought that I had, or would it just be removed entirely? Based on what I heard from the director did for Red and Girlfriend, I was genuinely scared that they would just remove it entirely. However, I'm satisfied that they did not remove it, and even times did more than what the manga did. The times when they changed to the chibi art style was absolutely what the manga had distinguished itself from other series, and even though a lot of people prefer having whole dedicated scenes without switching art styles, Having the chibi art style in the first place is very dedicated to its source material. It is one of the things that made Kubo Kubo, and every time you can see the pout, straight, or mad faces, they feel wholesome as heck. I haven't talked about the characters that much, but the two standouts besides the main two are definitely Seita and Akina. Being the siblings of the main duo, they introduce almost a scent of fresh air. Seita in itself is a being that has to be protected. The way that he says shows his bond with Shiraishi and is genuinely a fun and cute character. He does a lot of things to get Shiraishi to do something for the first time and is also there almost as a support for him. Akina, however, is legit a bulldozer storming through a school. It's funny how Kubo at times does tease Shiraishi but gets teased by Akina a hundred times more than what she does to Shiraishi. If you're talking about teasing in the show, don't talk about Kubo and Shiraishi. It's Kubo and Akina. Akina knows a lot about Kubo and the weaknesses that she has. From Akina, it also tells us that Kubo isn't exactly the perfect person that Shiraishi thinks she is, and she can definitely be uncomfortable at times. This is something that differentiates this anime and a lot of other anime. Typically, when we are introduced to a main heroine, we believe that they are this being that can pretty much do anything. Almost as if it was like an isekai character who can chant incantations without saying anything. The bond between the two is definitely weird at first, but you can definitely see how bonded these two are. I also never thought that Miku Ito would be good for this role, but she is actually the perfect person to play Akina. This is the series that absolutely has a lot of potential to become the next Takagi-san. There's a lot of content that can be adapted, and with Takagi-san closing or ending, Kubo can definitely take that role. A lot of people think that Takagi is superior to Kubo, and I definitely agree with that in terms of the anime. In terms of the manga, I've grown to like Kubo better as Shiraishi finally learns more and more about himself and finally finds a life that he's satisfied with. This show, with the help of Studio Pine Jam, can absolutely reach as one of the best romance shows we've seen. Of course, this is just my opinion, but it definitely has the feel to become one. But then of course, nothing can go the right way. Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible has been delayed episode 7 and onwards, and will be broadcasted during the spring season, starting at episode 1 again. There are a couple series that were delayed, and this show was one of them. I was saddened to see the news since this is probably my most anticipated adaptation for winter 2023. This doesn't mean that it's bad since Pine Jam could use that time to essentially create better drawings and styles that we could have not seen if they aired it all at once. Additionally, the manga just recently finished and I'm pretty much dying to see the rest of the episodes since I no longer have any more content to look forward to. This season. I felt like Kubo genuinely was one of the only series that I thought to myself, why has it only been 13 minutes, even though it feels like 30 minutes? When we watch anime, it often passes by so fast, but Kubo broke the strike for me. Even though I have a lot of vibes for this show, these 6 episodes felt like 12 episodes, and it was just a nice cozy experience to have this season. Literally episode 6, you could call that a season. And you could probably still be satisfied with it, yet we still have 6 more episodes. 
despite the first season only having 12 episodes. I'm anticipating that there will be probably be more seasons, since there's a lot of source material and there's a hidden spoiler within the opening that was honestly genius to put. I've never seen this much dedication to its source material, and a lot of the time we never get that with anime. However, Kubo definitely is one of those anime that has had almost a perfect adaptation, with only about 2 or 3 chapters being skipped from the series, and some you can just look at the ASMR videos. This was by far the most unwatched rom-com this season, mostly due to the delays, but even then, this still has to be one of my favorites this season.